Hi. Um, video 883, I believe. And uh, just a couple odds and ends. I wanted to just check in a couple different things. Um, today is November 20th, which, as you know, is the Transgender Day of Remembrance. Um, and I think in the past, and maybe even as recently as 10 minutes ago, um, you know, I uh, kind of confused Trans Day of Visibility versus the Trans Day of Remembrance. In the same way, we have Veterans Day and we have Memorial Day. You know, Memorial Day is to remember those people who have fallen that are veterans. Veterans Day is to give thanks to veterans. And I guess I, that's the closest analogy I can think of between Transgender Day of Visibility. Here we are. This is our plight. You know, or who we are. Education. Da, 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 versus Transgender Day of Remembrance which is sort of to remember the violence, people that have, you know, been hurt, or the violence against transgender people in our communities. Um, it kind of confused me a little bit. And, um, you know, it's uh, the first three years, maybe, of my transition. Um, you know, I would go together with people in this support group go to a church or somewhere and read the list of names of people that died. And I guess, you know, maybe after the third time of doing it, I kind of felt like, um, you know, this is important to do, but I wasn't really happy with just that. I wanted to do more. I wanted to, you know, it's like, you do stuff for your community, you do stuff that helps people within your community out. But, you know, reading a list of 20 names or 10 names or 11 names or however many, 40 some odd, 50 some odd names if you want to go nationally, and saying, you know, this person lived here and they did this, it's great for remembering that person, but it, it, to me it just seemed like a, an exercise in it didn't really do anything for me. It didn't really motivate me. It didn't really, you know, it was like a, not necessarily a self-aggrandizing thing, but I really felt like to deal with violence against transgender people, we have to take, I have to take, you take us out of it, me, I have to take that message out of the community. I have to take it out of the community. I want to get people outside the community in to know about it. So there's a bit of education and, you know, it's, it's like if you, if you had a funeral for someone and you invited people that they knew, you would remember that person, you know, but if you're trying to fight future violence and future da 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 I think you need to go outside of this silo, you know. It's it's good for people within the silo, but I guess to me I focus my energy more on on getting other people involved and getting the message out, which again may be more of transgender day of visibility. Um but what I found with people why I stopped doing it <laughs> put it to that way. Um was because it seemed to be more I just felt like it was very self aggrandizing. I just didn't I didn't like it. You know. That was just my opinion. My opinion only. Um so I tend to put more effort on the other. Um which hey, you can do both, right? You don't have to do just one or the other. Um the other thing I wanna try to talk about I kinda talked a little bit about Rome romantic relationships or you know being attracted to someone and I kind of felt like I I realized <laughs> you know and this may be more with me being asexual I think 
you know, to build up a rapport with someone, you have to get to know them. You have to, you know, to to develop a, you know, it's not necessarily love at first sight. You know, it's getting to know someone and getting to see them on a couple different days and when they're at their best and when they're at their worst. You know, I think that's when you, you begin to really develop a, relationship with somebody so I guess I felt like I was coming to the table saying if I don't have a gut reaction to somebody on a romantic level um, I'm not going to be romantic I won't you know there's no hope of a relationship in the future and what I've kind of learned is that that's really not number one it's, it's not how I function but on the long haul, if I can be turned on and turned off in such a quick way, <laughs> how good is that for the long haul? You know, the long haul. And maybe it's kind of my experience kind of from the male side coming to the female side. You know, there's such a strong sexual... Uh, you know, you feel Ugh, for a person. You're like, and again, maybe that's just my own, uh, I hate to say short-sighted. What is it when someone, if not ephemeral, not skin deep? It's not a very deep connection, I guess I want to say. It's, it's very superficial, very superficial. Yeah, now granted... <laughs> If you don't feel it for somebody and you don't feel it for somebody, I'm not saying ignore your, your gut instinct, but I just, I met somebody uh, at kind of a get to know you thing for a D and D game. And I was kind of like, well, they're cool and all, but I don't really have a feeling towards them. And then I played D with D and D with them a couple times and they are very funny. I enjoy their personality. It's like I, I got through that initial reaction. Uh, I'm kind of saying to myself, well, learn from this example. Learn that, uh, yes, you can have a gut instinct that says yes or no, but only through prolonged, you know, are you really going to get a feel for who that person is and what they're about, you know? And in terms of like online dating apps and everything, you know, swipe left, swipe right, you're basing all that on something visual, you know, which again, in terms of sex appeal, I could kind of see that. But I think again, from a, from me being more of an, an asexual point of view, or uh, there's another word for it, demisexual, maybe, you know, I'm going to develop a strong emotional and relationship attachment to someone before they I even find them you know sexually attractive um and somewhat in my up here we're going to switch gears again I'm sorry um a friend of mine this last week had posted something about um orgasms or something I don't exactly remember the context of it but, you know, I felt like for myself, I was like, geez, it takes me so long. It takes me so long to have an orgasm. I mean, when I, before, previous uh, setup, you know, I could get myself there within 10 minutes. Nowadays, whew, there's so many variables and so many things that have to be in the right alignment. You know, it's such a mental thing for me to have a to have a climax, to have an orgasm. And, you know, I like to think that, you know, I think what got me down the path was my friend was saying something about a female orgasm. And to myself, I kind of thought about, well, I wonder for me, would it be... A female orgasm versus a male orgasm versus 
having an orgasm as a result of being with someone you really have a deep connection to. You know, there have been in my past, um, there have been some women that I had some strong attachments to. And, um, you know, yeah, it was more than a 10 minute deal. <laughs> and I mean, it was, uh, it was deep. You know what I mean? So I think you can, I, I wonder for, again, for myself, you know, I have to have that connection. I have to have that relationship and then build from that. It's not necessarily going to be, you know, a storybook or a TV show type. You know, I saw them and at first sight, you know, I knew they were the one. I don't think, I don't think that's how it's going to work for me. I think it's going to be a long relationship. Um, with somebody. So that was something else that I kind of realized about myself was I was being a little stupid or a little, can I say naive? <laughs> Maybe that was just it. Um, other than that, not too much going on. Um, you know, I, I am, again, this being the, the transgender we had the day of visibility, and I guess today's of remembrance. You know, I, I really do think things are changing. I mean, in my lifetime, I don't know about you, but in my lifetime, things have got so different. Um, so I am optimistic about the future. Um, I do believe that there's a group of Americans right now in our society who kind of have their back up against a wall. And, um, you know, some 40 years ago, their views may not have been right, but they were more acceptable by society. And nowadays, our society does not, you know. Um, I think you're more likely to get someone who, I used an example um, this last week, um, the comedian Dave Chappelle was on Saturday Night Live and there was immediate kickback from, you know, he's being anti-Semitical, he's, you know, his stuff with the transgender stuff, you know, it was immediate, like, um, repercussions. You know, society has moved to the point that that sort of behavior is confrontational. It is, you know, it's going to provoke a response of admonition. And, you know, that's wrong. Whereas, you know, 20 years ago, 40 years ago, 60 years ago, society would have been, ah, ha, 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 you know, black man in a dress. You know, haha, it's funny. Um, I know that's just kind of a stereotype, you know. Um, I guess when I was in high school, the show Living Color, Jamie Foxx did a portrayal of, I think her name was Wanda, and she'd go, Aru, you know, a rocky world. She'd say, a rocky world. You know, and it was obviously a parody of of, you know, it was a black man in a dress being a woman in the same way of you just follow it back, you know, Flip Wilson. I mean, you know, from a comedic point of view. Um, so I, I have hope for the future. I really, really do. But, you know, that's, again, back to the idea of visibility. And, you know, um, being progressive. And that's something that I'm asking people this year. People that I know. It worked really well last year at work. Um, a couple of my co-workers. Um, they put transgender flags in their email signatures. And they put something like, I support trans rights or trans rights or human rights or whatever. And um, uh, they're not transgender. 
they're not trans in any way, shape, or form. Trans masculine, trans feminine. I mean, non-binary, just a way of showing support. You know? And uh, I'm encouraging that this year to people that I know. Um, just because the more we get it out there, I think it, it takes away some of the stigma. It takes away the the you know, boogeyman, ooky ickiness of it. And it also, you know, people, I think, you know, uh, there was a, a bit of a culture shift where, like, your friends, you know, may have, like, heard a, heard a joke, heard a black joke, and look around and see if there's any black people in the room and they tell the joke. Or they do the same thing with the gay person. You know, they look around. Uh, you know, I, I hope that we can get to that point with transgender stuff where, you know, the people who are being mean and hatred and discrimination, they have no idea if the person they're talking to is transgender or a trans person or a trans ally, let's say. And so they may not tell that joke. You know, slowly it's going to become, you know, I can remember back when I was a kid um, growing up in Florida, you know, my grandparents blamed everything on the Cubans or the Haitians. Um, and I've said this before, my grandparents referred to black people as colored people. And they'd say, oh, yeah, the colored. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? You know, we don't, we wouldn't say that today. It's, we take, I would be very offended if someone, and if someone was to say something to me, um, you know, I would do some educating. You know, I don't appreciate, I don't like that. You know, it's not so much a matter of being, um, it's a matter of taking it from being reactive to being proactive. In other words, become an anti-racist. Become anti-transphobic. You know, don't just be, uh, you know, non-judgmental or open-minded. Take it up a notch. You know, be assertive and active, I guess would be my thing. That's kind of what I'm encouraging people to do. But I'm very thankful to have allies. Don't get me wrong. Um, I just feel like it needs to be, for, for so many years we were, uh, you're, you're successful if you are stealth. You're successful if no one suspects you're transgender. You're successful. Da -da 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 -da. The people that society held in high esteem, if they did anybody, were trans women who passed. You know, trans women who were very beautiful. Trans women who basically filled the same sex object roles that women did in the past. Those were considered, you know, successful. And then the others you made fun of. You know, you made fun of Renee Richards. You made fun of Caitlyn Jenner. You made fun of the, the ugly, the ugly ducklings, perhaps. You know what I mean? You know, and then... You know, that's how far we've come. We've moved beyond that. We've moved beyond that. I hope. I hope we continue to move beyond that. So, anyway, just my thoughts for the day. Um, I did have another thing, too, that kind of took me back. Um, you know, some companies during Pride, um, you know, they put the the pride flag up. And then when pride's over, they take the pride flag down. And I guess that's something that I hope, I really hope eventually, you know, we treat LGBTQ, we treat transgender people with dignity and respect all year long. 
Okay. Not on the week of November, you know, 16 to 20. Okay. I hope that we treat with every, you know, every day, everyone, everywhere, every which way you can with respect. And so I guess this week I was somewhat taken back because I, I didn't see the love. I didn't see the transgender support, even from within my own community. You know, even from within the LGBT community where I work. Nothing. I mean, nothing. And uh, I've said this before, too. I really do think transgender people, you know, we're, we're the, the red-headed stepchild <laughs> when it comes to LGBT stuff. Um, you know, they don't know where to put us. Uh, I'm not gay. I'm not a lesbian. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm transitioned. I'm living my life as my authentic self. But I'm not gay. I'm not a lesbian. I'm not bisexual. You know, it's like, oh, we'll come, you know, we're, you know, again, we're our, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. When the Equality Act gets passed, you know, hopefully it'll, you know, benefit everybody. But I just, and, and I made mention of it. I think we got to Thursday and I made a comment, you know, about how there was nothing. And it was like a, a last minute excuse like oh we're sorry you know well okay but you know I, I can't be my own ally <laughs> I, I can't be my own advocate you know I'm not gonna convince I'm not gonna get support from myself you know I need support from people outside the community I need allyship from people outside. You know what I mean? So I think that's kind of where, again, in the past, I kind of saw this week as being very introspective. And now I look at it as being very, you know, external. We need to get out of this silo. You know, I think we can do both. You know, but, you know. We're only going to defeat ignorance through education and, and contact, exposure. You know, getting the word out there who we are, what we're about, and dispelling ignorance. You know, but I think I think we can do both. I think we can. You know, here we are. This is what we believe in. This is why we're together. You know, we are loved and worthy of love. We are human beings. We are, you know what I mean, to ourselves. But then we need to take that a step further to, you know, get the edge, get the information out there. To get that, you know, fight that ignorance. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I didn't see anything on the news. I checked the White House website before I made the video here. Nothing. Um, you know, like I said, we're... It's like we're an afterthought, you know? <sighs> Doesn't have to be that way. Doesn't have to be that way. But anyway, that's it. I'm going to shut up. Have some fun. Hopefully you're doing well, enjoying the fall weather. And uh, until next time, good luck in becoming your authentic self. Look, I've lost some nails. <laughs> Uh, they pop off. I don't have the money to get them back on. So, uh, you know, when they're gone, they're gone. It's the way life is. All right. Till next time. Bye-bye.